Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music. So I'm a composer. I also do a ton of sound design for theater. And so I got a call from um, an actor. She's doing a one-woman play, lots of songs in it. She's taking it to London. She needed some small sound music cues, really, to join, to stitch together uh, the bigger pieces. She was playing guitar, piano, singing, dancing. So we, we did a few of these things, and I thought it might be fun to show you one of them today. There are some unique challenges and considerations, and it's, it's fun to look at the tools that we used, talk a little bit about the collaboration process, and, uh, well, you'll see. <music> So the cue that I want to look at is right at the end of the show. Um, our actor has just finished a, a song in D flat major. She's got a jingle jangly open D flat tuning, sort of a drop D flat tuning on guitar, big D flat two chord, puts it down, stands up. She walks over to the piano, sits down and begins the like a final song in F. So the transition between D flat two and F major, fairly substantial change. And sort of my assignment was, let's get a sound cue that works to propel us through that transition, about 25 seconds or so. Well, of course, I'm thinking about key signatures. This is the sound. So imagine there's our D flat two chord. I just built it so I could hear it. And then I knew there was a certain amount of time and the time allows me to make a transition um, tonally. So I want to head towards a C7 chord, right? So I can push to the F and, uh, and then kind of create a blooming effect, some propulsion, and then we get the key signature of F. I'm going to mute those two things, those two chords, and let's take a look at uh, what I wound up doing. So my first thought was to begin with essentially a guitar sound, an acoustic guitar sound but not just any guitar sound. Using contact, I decided to use this kind of fantastic instrument, um, the Swarmatar. And, you know, it's, it's got some beautiful properties. We can fade in um, a number of things. Uh, we can fade in the filter and out. We can fade in volume and out, and then here's my favorite thing. Let's swarm it. All right, so those simple three notes, right? Here we go. Get sort of spread out, it smears, right? Pitches go up, pitches go down. We keep the original pitch in the center. That's the essence of a swarm. And this particular instrument, the swarmatar, and I've done, I think, a whole demo of it, allows us to select what instruments we're gonna use, an acoustic guitar or not. So I've basically got kind of a mountain dulcimer or Appalachian dulcimer and acoustic guitar doing it. And I've set how far up I bend and how far down I bend. I've set the swarm range. Um, and I basically just kind of allowed that sound to begin centered on D-flat. Open up the filter, get broader and broader, and then swarm, because I want to change. And we'll have other things coming in, so I faded it out. It's a kind of a way of doing a roll on a cymbal that has very strong tonalities. Tonalities I can control and kind of use. Well, my next impulse was to actually have an instrument that I could really control the tonal language. And so I, I went for this beautiful string sound. And this string sound is um, from John Meyer's collection, um, what he calls woven strings. This is a free sound. I think it might be available on Piano Book like this or directly from John. Um, it, it's got some really beautiful animations and I've sent it through some effects we wound up not using it. it. It wasn't really necessary, but look at the trick harmonically. We start with a kind of an open sound. It's kind of a G flat major. It falls down and we wind up on C7. That C7 sound is gonna push us to F. The actor didn't really care for it that much. We didn't need it really. What she really loved was the sound of this 
kind of rubbed bowl. And this, this instrument, uh, oh, it's just so gorgeous. I, I've got a bunch of different articulations, but the basic articulation here has control over volume and filter. And essentially it's just C, G, and C again with the filter opening up to give me a lot of air. We wound up using that sound as the foundation for it. When you're working in theater, you really want to listen to what the actor's uh, intuition or the director's intuition is telling them. They can't always express it um, articulately, certainly not in musical terms. So I like to walk into a meeting with stuff prepared. I had most of this ready, although I didn't do all the, an the uh, uh, animations. I didn't do all the volume changes. I didn't do all of the assignments for controllers until we were sitting together so we could figure out the timings. One thing I did know is that when you're doing cues like this, it is just great to have something that has some rhythm, a little propulsion. And so stealing from an idea that was earlier in the show, just a very simple desk bell, creating a little repeated iterative propulsion that takes us through the cue. This is the sound of the cue as we decided to go with it. during this tail out, she'll sit down and just go ahead and play an F chord, and it'll work fine against the C and the G, you know, it's just, and then that'll just kind of fade out by itself. It's really important that our sound cues and music cues have a kind of a transparency. They need to be uh, interpretable in a number of different ways. Keep in mind that when you make a music or sound cue for theater, this is the one time the audience is going to get a chance to hear it. It's not like a piece of music or a song that you can hear over and over again. It's in the context of a performance. It needs to serve that moment really cleanly and clearly. And so very clear, direct, simple gestures tend to work better. Actors' activities on stage earn the sound in a way. You don't want to over score because it sort of obliterates the actor. We really, really want to just work to what's there on the stage. That's to some degree true in film, although in film we know we can go a little bit further, control the emotional contour a little bit more. Stage is always a little more flexible, a little more random, somewhat chaotic. Cues can't be exactly as tight. All that affects what we choose to do and how we implement it on stage. Well, I handed over the files to her. She'll be traveling to London, giving those files to her sound designer there, and they'll put it together in the show. We'll see how it all turns out. If it's uh, good news, I'll report back. If it isn't, we'll just blithely move on to the next thing. <laughs> It was fun doing this with her. I was, I think, the first collaborator sh that she had on this project. She'd been working really hard on it for the past couple of years. And it's an, always an honor to be able to contribute to a piece of work which means a lot to someone and that really has some, you know, potential to go somewhere. So I'm excited to be part of this. Well, I hope this has been useful. Like and subscribe. Ding the bell. You'll be notified when I do my videos. And uh, I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.